How's it going everybody? As you may or may not know, I live in a single wide trailer. Nothing fancy about it, it's kind of bland and boring. You see, for the past couple of years, I've been living in a single wide trailer. Why? Because I'm too lazy and too broke to afford an actual house, but I don't really like the feeling of living in a trailer. It doesn't quite feel like an actual house. It's old, it's outdated, it's a little grungy, like very messy and dirty. So I have been working on ways to completely remodel it and refresh it to where it feels like I'm living in a legit house that's nice, new, modern, just built. So as I remodel this last and final room, I'm gonna take the time to show you the four things that I have learned that really help take your room from looking like a mobile home to an actual house. Now, I've mentioned several times already these four things, and you're probably wondering what are they? So without dragging it out, they are flooring, paint, trim, and lighting. Starting with flooring, lose the carpet. It stinks, okay? And it sucks light out of the room. It makes it just feel depressing. In all seriousness though, losing the carpet can get rid of so many unwanted smells and going to hardwood flooring allows the light to bounce off of it, making the room feel that much more airy and open rather than small and confined. Now, obviously if we're going to be pulling this carpet out, we have to get rid of anything that would get in the way, such as this air vent and the threshold for the door. Now, unfortunately, if you just try to go ripping and tearing to get this carpet out, you'll run into the issue of having all kinds of tacks holding the carpet down along the edges of the wall. In this situation, the best thing you can really do is take a good box cutter and slide it along the edge of each wall, cutting the carpet away and making it easier to pull out. Now, if you do it right and you've cut cleanly along each wall, it's actually pretty fun because you get to roll the entire carpet up in one big carpet burrito. Now, as soon as you get the carpet removed, you're gonna wanna move the wood flooring in as soon as possible because it needs to sit for at least 48 to 72 hours. That might seem a little bit arbitrary and you might think that you can cheat the system a little bit and just ignore that step, but trust me, as it adjusts to the heat and humidity or the cool of your home, it will warp, it will bend, and it will stretch. This can literally cause your floor to start splitting and ruin all your good hard work and all the money that you spent on your nice new flooring. But while we're waiting for the flooring to acclimate to the new environment, it's good to take some time and talk about some of the possible repairs and problems you might run into when you remove the carpet or flooring. For an example, I'm gonna show you what happened in my master bedroom. You see, whenever I pulled the carpet back in this room, I found a whole lot of water damage to the subframe. This can be really hard to detect until you actually pull the old flooring off because in most situations, the water damage is covered by the top layer of flooring. In this instance, my brown carpet hid the water stain so I never really noticed that it was wet, but the carpet held in the moisture and just caused things to keep rotting over time rather than drying out. Now thankfully, while this might seem like a very intimidating fix, it's actually somewhat simple. All you have to do is find some way or another to remove all the old rotten wood, and then measure and cut an appropriate size piece of plywood, slot it into place like a puzzle piece, and boom, there you go. Once you're done fixing any damages to the subfloor, it's time to clean everything up and get ready to lay the new floor. Now, there are a couple things to take into consideration before you start. Obviously, the boards are shaped in a certain way to click together, so each end has a different shape and each side has a different shape. And it's important to take that into note whenever you actually go to lay the first line. Once you have the first line down, it's simple, all the rest clicks into place, good to go. But whenever it comes to the room itself, you also have to take that into consideration. In this room, we have one long, flat, even wall, and on the other side, we have two doorways that we're going to have to make some in cuts. So, rather than potentially messing up this flat line over here with the doorways, we're going to start with this long, flat, even space, get everything lined up right, and then just bring it across the room, and at that point, we'll make the in cuts and kind of fit everything into place. So, let's get into it. First of all, you're going to want to start by putting down a layer of this subfloor protecting material. It provides a little bit of extra cushion, a little bit of sound dampening, and sometimes it's even waterproof. It just depends on how much money you're wanting to spend. This right here is very cheap, comes in a big roll, you just roll it into place and you're good to go. 
Now whenever you go to lay your first line, make sure you make it as straight and even as possible because everything else will be built off this one line. As you continue adding line by line, you'll probably run into a couple of obstacles like this cable, but it's really not that big of a deal. All you have to do is simply lay the board down, mark out where the cable will need to come through, get the appropriate size drill bit and drill a hole, feed the cable through it, and then just click that piece together like you would any other piece. If you end up having to make a more complicated cutout like the one for this air vent hole right here, all you're going to have to do is make sure you're careful with your measurements, mark out the board, cut it with some sort of high speed saw, and then slot it into place. If you do it right, it should all go together just like a little puzzle piece and it should be fine. Now what's even harder to do is cutting around the door frames and the final wall. But as long as you take your time and you're careful with your measurements, measure twice, cut once, should be good to go and end up looking pretty decent. As a nice finishing touch, I went ahead and added a brand new floor vent and boom, there you have it. Adding a nice new flooring to any room can really bring it to life and make it feel much more modern and new and sleek. All right, now on to the second thing. Paint. As you can see with the paint in here, these walls are a little bit darker, it's a little bit messy and dirty, the walls are in really bad shape, so it's in dire need of a refresh and it needs a new coat of paint. But before we can get to painting, we have to address any damages that are on our walls. So if there's any dents or just massive holes like this, <laughs> we need to take care of that first before we can start slapping paint on. Now, whenever it comes to patching holes in the wall, depending on what you're working with, you actually have more options than you might think. You see, there are plenty of videos out there that will show you how to patch a hole in drywall, and if you have a small one, then I can see it as being a quick, easy repair. But, if you have a bigger one like this, think about the cost. By the time you get the putty, and the putty knife, and the piece of drywall, and maybe the fiberglass tape to put between to keep it all together, at that point, you're spending way more money than it would cost to literally just replace this entire piece of drywall. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. I'm literally going to just take off this entire section and replace it with a brand new sheet of plywood. It only costs like 12 bucks, so it's not that expensive, and it will look way better than any kind of patch that I tried to do. I can get away with doing this in a mobile home because the walls are segmented with just a little strip in between. So that's the process I'm going to be showing you where I literally just take the damaged piece of drywall off and replace it with a new one. Let's get into it. Now to remove this wall segment, all we have to do is remove this little center divider piece by loosening up one end and then peeling the rest off all the way down. Just make sure not to damage it too much because you're going to need to put it back on whenever you're done. If you happen to have a wall segment with a light switch like I do, remove the cover, then remove the fixture itself, and don't mess with any of the wires, just push the fixture through the hole in the wall so you can remove the whole wall segment in one piece. Now the reason you wanna be super careful and remove your old wall in one big piece is because you're going to lay that down on your new piece of drywall so that you can properly mark out exactly what size and shape it needs to be so that you can cut out the new piece to be exactly the right size and shape and it'll slot right back into the wall just like nothing ever happened. With the damages to the wall repaired, we're going to move right along with preparations for paint. And this is where you need to decide whether or not you want to remove your trim. As you can see, I'm removing my trim because I fully well intend on replacing it. But if you do not intend to replace your trim, just go ahead and mask it off like everything else. Other than that, you wanna make sure you are removing or masking off anything you don't wanna get paint on. So. Remove the outlet covers and the light switch cover, as well as the blinds and the curtain hangers. Then mask off the outlets themselves and the window sills to make sure that you don't get paint on anything that will be showing whenever you're done. Before you start applying the primer, make sure that you rub the walls down with some sort of coarse cloth like a microfiber towel to remove any loose spider webs or any grease, dirt, debris, just anything that would keep the paint from adhering to the wall. Now before we start playing with paint, let me show you this quick little fun fact. If you take a metal hanger and fold it in on itself and then snip off the hook at the end, you can actually put that into a drill and use it as a simple little paint mixer. 
It works really well, and that's what I do for all my projects as I don't feel like cleaning up a paint mixer or buying one in the first place. Anywho, moving on to painting itself, there really isn't a whole lot to it. All I have is just a few basic pointers and kind of things I've learned along the way. First of all, you definitely want to make sure that you're mixing your paint very thoroughly before you start applying it to the wall. It is also super important to test the paint on the wall you will be painting. Make it in a small, inconspicuous area, but test it nonetheless. No matter what it might look like on the sample, it ends up looking different in the lighting of the room based off of whatever coat you're covering. Like there are a lot of different factors, so always just test a small little spot, get a sample. It's much better than wasting a lot of money on a bucket of paint that you won't end up using. Unfortunately for this situation, as you can see, I just went straight for putting the primer on, didn't test the paint, and I was really discouraged whenever I found out that the entire gallon I had got was not the color I wanted. So, test first, paint later. Thankfully, even though this wasn't the color I was going for, it's still really good paint, and it ended up looking really good. It kind of just gave it more of that like minimalist modern vibe as compared to the very open airy white light vibe that I was going for. Different vibe, but not necessarily a bad vibe. I still like it. All right, so the paint color isn't exactly what I intended from the beginning, but it's not too terribly dark and I think we can roll with it. So time to move on to step number three, the trim. Trim is super overlooked, but it's actually relatively affordable. It just takes a little bit more effort, but you put it in and it really makes a huge difference. Most mobile homes come with this really nasty, kind of like just flat, super cheap trim. And over time, it definitely shows its age and doesn't look good at all. So we're gonna be swapping out that old dated trim and we're gonna be putting in legitimate floor and crown molding and making it look a whole lot better. Let's get into it. Whenever it comes to trim, you really have a lot of options and it all just depends on what you're wanting it to look like in the end, how much time, effort, and money you wanna put into it. On one side of the spectrum, in my master bedroom, I removed all the trim and not only that, but the window framing wood as well. And I carefully measured everything, sanded the boards down and put in all new window framing as well as trim, hand stained, everything looked great. But that took days and days of effort. Still look great in the end though. On the much simpler side of things, for this room, I decided to just go with simple one inch trim, top and bottom, with the stuff on top being curved in and the stuff on the bottom being curved out, just for a little bit of variety. All in, it only cost me about 64 bucks, which in my opinion is totally worth it because it makes it look a lot more modern and actually intentional rather than that old garbage trim that was there before. Whenever it comes to doing the corners, trim can be a little bit difficult because you have to do something called coping, where you cut it at a specific angle and then you have to cut away a little bit of the corner of the trim to be able to make it fit together nicely. Coping can be very difficult depending on what trim you're working with, given the level of detail that it has, so it kind of deserves its own video and I won't go into detail with it here. There are some good videos of how to cope on YouTube, but if you want me to make a video on this in the future, just let me know in the comments below. This room in particular was really easy to do, didn't take much effort or money, so it's exactly what I was going for. A nice new look to the room without a whole lot of spending or effort. So that's the trim taken care of, and with that, it's time to move on to the fourth and final thing, and that is lighting. Now, whenever it comes to a mobile home, you don't really have a whole lot of options whenever it comes to lighting because the ceiling is so low, you can't exactly have this nice fancy fixture or anything like that. And the little fixtures that you get like this, they just don't provide a whole lot of light. With a little bit of light in the room, it looks a lot smaller, a little bit more enclosed, and we want to open up the room, make it look bigger than it actually is. So we need more lighting. And if we can't have a bigger fixture to provide that, then what we can do is add several different lamps around the room that individually add together and make a much more brighter environment. But that's just the basics. So while I fix these light fixtures, let's talk about it a little bit more. First of all, get yourself one of these. All this is is a simple cheap pan light for your ceiling, but it looks a lot more modern and new than the old light fixture I had hanging. 
While it won't add a whole lot of extra light, as we mentioned before, we will compensate by having other lamps in the room to make for an overall better lit environment. Now, naturally, anytime you go to do electrical work, it's a little bit nerve wracking if you don't know what you're doing. So just make sure you're being safe, turn off the light, unplug the circuit breaker, and make sure that you wire everything up per the instructions. If you do all that correctly, the light should go together fine and work like it's intended. Once you have the main ceiling light installed, it's just a matter of picking out whatever lights you think work with what you want the room to look like. So have fun with it, put together a couple different lamps, and boom, there you have it. So that's it. We've done the flooring, we've done the paint, we've done the trim, we've done the lighting. Now, here's a quick bonus thing. Thing number five, attention to detail. I went ahead and switched out all the outlet covers and the light switch cover as well as switching out the blinds for a much more modern new look. This is the fun part where you get to be creative and decorate your new room exactly how you want it to be. And in my case, this is what I ended up with. So there you have it. The final room of the remodel is complete. And I am so excited about it. I love how it turned out. It's got this kind of like modern minimalist vibe to it. And some of that is definitely because I haven't actually decorated it yet. This is kind of just the bare bones furniture because I'm planning on building a full on gaming streaming setup in here, which I'm really excited for, but I have to build the desk, build the PC and all that stuff. So that's for future videos. But for now, this completes the remodel of the trailer and I am super excited about it. So hopefully you were able to learn a few things, take some inspiration, and if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe for more videos in the future because I have so many planned. And yeah, let me know in the comments below. Have you ever tried remodeling a trailer? Do you ever plan to? What are some things that you learned the easy way and the hard way? Because there's definitely plenty of those lessons whenever it comes to doing your own remodeling projects. But with all that said, I've done enough rambling. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. Till next time, peace out. Have a, have a good day. You, you have, a, have a great day. Okay, bye now.